Dr. Bovary! Hello, anyone at home? Who are you? What do you want? Is the doctor at home, madam? This is the middle of the night. Please, madam, it's Monsieur Ruo at Le Berto Farm. He's broken his leg. Oh, well, just a minute. Charles? Mm. Well, uh, I'm what, what so is... sorry to disturb you. Oh, what is it? There's a man outside wants you to go to Liberto Farm. Oh, that's at least six leagues away. Well, what did he say his business was? Well, someone's broken a leg. <sighs> T tell him I'll come at once. Well, go in the morning. It's too dark tonight. There's no moon. No, I'll get dressed. Do you want food? No, it's too early. I'll make you some hot chocolate. Uh -huh. It was daylight by the time they arrived at Monsieur Rouault's. The farm was obviously a prosperous one. As he entered the yard, Charles could see through the half-open doors of the stable huge draught horses placidly feeding. A stream of vapour arose from a big manure heap that flanked the building. And standing among the hens and turkeys, five or six peacocks, that luxury of Normandy farmyards, were pecking for food. Ah, it's just a simple fracture, I'm very glad to say. No complications. We'll have you up and running about again in no time at all. Oh, that'll be an improvement. I haven't been able to run for years. <laughs> yes. Now I'll need a bundle of laughs to make splints. Jack! A bundle was fetched. Charles chose one lath cut it into lengths and smoothed it with a piece of glass, while the servant tore up sheets to make bandages. Ruo's daughter offered to sew some pads. What are you doing now, lass? Looking for my needle case, father. Dreaming again. You want to get yourself organised. Come down to earth and stay there. Oh, here it is. It won't take me long. But as she sews, she keeps pricking her fingers, which she then puts into her mouth and sucks. Charles is surprised by the whiteness of her nails. They are lustrous, almond-shaped, delicately pointed and cleaner than the ivories of Dieppe. When will you call again, Doctor? What? Uh, let's say in three days. Oh, good. Now, uh, Emma will take you to the kitchen and give you some refreshment for your journey home. In the kitchen, a great fire blazed. The shovel, the tongs, and the nozzle of the bellows, all of gigantic proportions, glistened like polished steel. Sit here at the table, Doctor, if you will. He watches her as she moves about. She wears a blue woolen dress with three flounces. Would you like some wine? Yes, thank you. He looks up. Her eyes are magnificent. Although brown, they appear black because of the lashes and she looks straight at you with a gaze that is candid and bold. Is anything the matter, Doctor? Oh, my, uh, my, my, my riding crop, I, 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 I don't seem to have it. Oh, it's there, falling down between the sacks of wheat. Oh, oh sorry. 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 I'll get it. Can you, can you reach it? Uh, yes. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Will you take some soup? I don't want to put you to any trouble. Instead of waiting three days before calling back, it was the very next day that Charles came. I was away at convent school for a very long time. I came home after my mother died two years ago. My father needed me. My wife passed away at about the same time. Your wife? Oh, how terrible for you. How utterly tragic. Well, I... It's sad enough to lose a mother, but you must miss her. No, I, I, I mean, it's all right, really. But who I, looks after you? My mother comes and stays from time to time, and there's the daily woman. Charles thinks of nothing else now but visiting Emma. You are a wonderful pianist. Oh, I'm not so good, but I adore Chopin's music. So do I, when you play it. <laughs> Seventy-five. That's seventy-five francs for your services, Doctor, with my deepest gratitude. My leg's completely healed. Thank you, sir. Not at all. And uh, here's a, a turkey ready dressed. Uh, what do you say to that? 
You like turkey? Yes, yes, I do. We shall miss your visits, Emma and I. And I... <clears throat> As to that... Well, so there is there is something... Yes? What? There's something I, I want to tell you, ask you, uh, that is, um, something, um... Well, come on, then. Out with it. I... I, I can't. <laughs> As if I didn't know what's on your mind. <laughs> per... per rule. I've seen I... you both together and I know what you want. <laughs> There's nothing I'd like better and I'm sure my little girl feels the same. <laughs> Still, I'd better ask her. <laughs> I'll go now. Strike while the iron's hot. You go outside and stand by the paddock. Uh -huh. And if it's yes... Listen carefully. Mm -hmm. I'll slam that big shutter on the window there. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Emma! Emma! Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. The answer is yes. What I've always wanted, Father, is to be married at midnight. What? By the light of a hundred torches. Oh, don't talk so daft. I don't know where you get these ideas from. And so Charles and Emma were married. The wedding was attended by 43 guests, friends and family who ate and drank and celebrated for three days. The morning after the wedding night, Charles carried his bride back to the village of Tost. He was glowing. You would have thought he had been the virgin whereas the bride gave absolutely no sign that meant anything to anybody. Here we are. <gasps> What's that? What? On the table. It's a bride's bouquet. Who? Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 sh I should have... Your wife? Well, I'll take it away. You sit there. Don't worry. You are my wife now. A dead bride's bouquet. What would happen to my bouquet if I were to die? For the first time in his life, Charles was totally happy without a care in the world. But what about your first wife? Eloise, I never loved her like I love you. I'll never love anyone else like I love you, my dearest. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, silly child. You're waffling me. Anyway, she had gold feet in bed. <laughs> Lying in bed every morning by her side, he watches the sunlight move over the golden down on her cheeks. When she turns to face him, the pupils of her eyes are huge from so close a distance. I can see myself ever so small in your eyes. And every morning when he sets out on his visits, he turns and looks back at her standing at the upstairs window, waving to him, her dressing gown hanging loosely, her hair unbraided. And his flesh content, he rides off, ruminating his happiness like someone who after dinner goes on savouring the taste of the truffles he has eaten. Then when he returns at night, always late, Emma is there with a meal waiting for him. Old Mother Simon kept me talking. She got gout again. So I wrote her, her usual prescription. Then there was that child. More wine? <clears throat> Thank you. Then he takes himself off to bed. The silk scarf which he sleeps in never stays properly on his head, so that in the morning his hair is all over his face and covered in white down from the pillow. And so the days pass, each one the same as the last. Music, when soft voices die, vibrates in the memory. Odors, when sweet violets sicken, live within the sense they quicken. You play so well, Emma, my dear. I love music. I heard a professional pianist once in Rouen. At the theatre? Oh, yes. The theatre. Mm -hmm. I've never been. Didn't you go when you were living in Rouen? Why? To 
see the actors from Paris and to hear the poetry of the language, to see all the people. If you'd like to go, my dear, we'll, we'll go. Wouldn't you? I don't know. What would you like to do, Charles? Tell me, what would you like to do? Huh? What have you ever really liked in your life so far? <laughs> I desire nothing but you. Apart from me. <laughs> what about, say, swimming? Can't swim. Fencing? Don't know how. Shooting? No. I thought a man knew everything. Oh, my sweet. <laughs> but this man knew nothing, taught nothing, desired nothing. And Emma resented him for his settled calm, for his untroubled dullness. Indeed, for the very happiness she brought him. Now then, daughter, I've organised the linen cupboard for you. So I see, mother. Thank you. Madame Bovary Senior came to stay. It's the butcher's day for calling tomorrow. I know, Mother. You must keep a close eye on him when he brings the meat. Check it over and weigh it out before you let him out of your sight. I know that, butcher. Yes, Mother. When Emma was not around, his mother spoke to Charles. Careless way she's got with her, your wife. She, she hasn't... Well, she goes through sugar and candles as fast as a great house. And the amount of charcoal burnt in the kitchen most days would do to feed 25. Oh, not as much as that, Mother. Now, let me remind you that you were brought up to value what your father, rest his soul, and I worked hard to get for you. Yet Emma was a great help to Charles in his business and always sent out the bills in nicely phrased letters so they didn't sound like bills. Sometimes patients settle their accounts in kind. And so it came about that a gamekeeper, cured by the doctor, gave Emma a small Italian greyhound. Oh, oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, you little darling. Oh, I shall call you Jali, my sweet thing. <laughs> and touched by Jali's mournful expression, Emma made the animal her sole friend and confidant. Every afternoon, they would go for a walk up the beach avenue. Before I got married, I thought I was in love. But now... Life's not like it is in the novels, is it? They talk about passion and bliss and ecstasy, but... But her life was becoming as cold as an attic with a skylight facing north. Oh, jolly. You haven't a care in the world, have you? And boredom, like a silent spider, was weaving its web in every shadowy recess of her heart. Why did I ever get married? <sighs> then, towards the end of September, they were invited to a ball at the Chateau La Vaubiessard by the Marquis d'Andevillers. The Marquis! Oh, Charles, to have dinner and to dance and stay the night in a real chateau and, and mix with exciting people and, and... Oh, 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 say that we'll go, Charles. Say, please. Yeah, but, yes, if, if you really want to go, my love, of course, we shall go to the ball. <laughs>